It's 2019. <laughs> happy New Year to our viewers, and we've been celebrating in the studio. I want to say Happy New Year, Apple Super James. Happy New Year, yo. Happy New Year, <laughs> <laughs> MJ. Hey, happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Happy, happy New, New Year, year. Yeah. man. Yeah, they will. No, 2018. 2018 is gone. <laughs> and hello, folks, and welcome to the first edition of Journalist Anger for the year 2019. The much more anticipated 2019 election is here, and we'd like to welcome you on board as we collectively journey to probably the most important event of the year for Nigeria, the election. It is 45 days away from the presidential election. I'm Ayodili Uzubakum. Today on the program, President Buhari reiterates commitments to credible 2019 polls. A New Year message says election need not to be do or die affair. Governors insist they cannot pay 30,000 naira minimum wage as organized labor vows to shut down economy. And later on the show, Christian Association of Nigeria urges INEC to prove neutrality, cautions government against militarization or polls. I'll be hanging out with my first corporate, <laughs> corporate for the year, that's Adekule Yusuf, Moji Jamu, and Asuko James. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Greetings from the maestro himself, Babajide Koladi Otitoju is in is around now and sometime next week we'll join on, he will join us. He's still enjoying his um, holiday. Greetings to everybody. He say, he's telling me to tell you Happy New Year on this behalf. It's a new year. The one Nigerians have been anticipating with a measured breath. The year 2019 is another crucial one in the country's history with a scheduled general election coming up in about 45 days. Nigeria's President Muhammad Buhari underscores the importance of this in his New Year message when he reiterated his commitment to a free, fair and credible elections. According to President Buhari, the elections need not to be do or die affair as what the country desire is peace, security and prosperity. Now, now that the President has set the tone, we hope other political gladiators will tone Told that um, we told that line and tone down on and doomsday prophets. Please, we are going to go beyond this um, um, 2019 election and Nigeria will be a great country. Asuko is Mr. President telling us with this statement that it's not a do or die affair or make or mar affair. Is Mr. President tell us? Is Mr. President telling us in his New Year speech that if he loses that presidential <coughs> election come February the 14th. He's going to congratulate whoever wins the election and is going to relinquish his power come May 29th. Well, from, from his speech, because I, I read the, the statement, you know, um, last night, and I had to also read it again. To be very sure. To be sure, you know, and the tune was more about hope and trying to make sure that Nigeria is peaceful before, during, and after the election. Statement. And he has always re reiterated that fact in most of his, um, most fora that he has attended, that is not going to be a do or die affair in this particular election. Now, people think otherwise, you know, maybe the, because of the undertone and the way the campaigns have been going, which is why sometimes when once you go on social media, it is more on social media that people are even attacking themselves, you know, than outside. And that is why I, we even right here, we, we, what we always say is that the campaign should be more about issues We're than on personalities. Anything. 45 days to the election. You understand? Because, <laughs> that, because if, the, if the campaign is more about issues, anybody that wins is going to be free, fair, and everybody will say yes, he won. But when once you start to overheat the polity, attacking personalities, and, and uh, maybe family, and things that are not issue-based, that is when the polity will be overheated. 
But from the tone of the president, from the statement, it shows that, guys, anything that happens, I'm going to go back to Daura. But will these people... Anything that happens, or yes. if I lose... The if election. I lose, okay. let me use that. If I lose, okay. I'll go back to Daura. But his people, his supporters, is, I think, from now, what I would expect the president to do is to also reiterate and speak to his supporters and say, my friends, anything that happens, whatever the outcome will be, Nigeria has to be united. We need a peaceful country after this general election. And he has to keep telling his supporters this because it is the supporters that are always overzealous. The man at the helm is a gentle person. Everybody knows that. Forget about whatever we are seeing. But from the tone of what we have read yesterday and today, it shows that Mr. President is ready to relinquish power if he loses that general ele election. Majid, the first thing that caught my attention in my transition hour, in his transition hour of um, Good Luck Jonathan, is um, pres former president of Ghana statement, John Mahama, saying that, you know, when quoted, quoting Good Luck Jonathan, saying that his ambition is not worth anybody's blood. And that statement became a kind of, you know, um, paradigm shift for some politicians across the country. Now, do you see Momodo Buhari towing that line, if eventually? Yes, um, beyond the speech of the president, uh, uh, beyond this New Year message where he assured Nigerians of uh, a credible poll uh, in for, starting from 45 days time, I, I believe everything is said. And uh, also, if Buhari loses, peradventure if he loses that uh, election, of course, we'll go back to Daura. But the thing is, I, I, want us, I want to take us back to 2015 when he assumed office. The first state he visited was uh, Cross River, um, a, 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 a PDP state, so to say, an opposition state. And uh, if you have been looking at his antecedents, this is somebody who takes life very simple. Mm -hmm. He believes that whatever is due to you, whether you are APGA or APC or PDP, if it is constantly due to you, you let to have you it. You said that he's a victim of election mm -hmm. malpractice. Yeah, yeah that is it. On, on like, mm -hmm. Unlike in the past where we had a, a president uh, stopping uh, the uh, local government al allocation of Lagos State, for example, or a president denying others their rights to ecological funds just because they are not in his camp. So you see a Buhari that even uh, Ebony State is one of the uh, highest benef beneficiaries of the CBN's uh, Anchor Boreal uh, Scheme in uh, agriculture uh, that has uh, increased uh, the right pro production in, in, in that state. And you can see a Boyin governor, uh, Umai, almost campaigning uh, for, for, for Buhari. He's, he's, a, PDP he's a PDP governor. And you see Ben Nayade saying good things about this same Buhari. So when it comes, when somebody like that, like a president like that, comes out to tell you that this election it's, it's not what uh, uh, anybody's uh, uh, life that is urging us, all, uh, it's urging all Nigerians to ensure that these elections are free and fair and that uh, he, he, he's pleading with his opponents, uh, especially the PDP, to stop peddling the one. They should face uh, issues, issues and stop uh, feeding people with lies. I can imagine uh, saying that um, uh, Buhari, uh, Buhari has uh, uh, more shares in uh, uh, nine mobile than uh, the equity of the company itself, or, or that uh, he has bought a, a Providor's a bank, or is it a, a, a Sky Bank now? So, some some very funny claims. <coughs> At times, I say they will say he has, he has bought my club, Asna. So, all those uh, filmsy uh, uh, rhetorics. I think, like uh, Azuko said, this election will be won on the field, not on Facebook. A lot of people sit down on uh, Facebook, listen, they, they keep sharing. Uh, 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 rumors and all those stuff, but when the ships are down, people will go to the polling units and cast their ballots. That is where elections are won and lost, not on uh, social media. But basically, I think uh, uh, I, I don't see I don't see a, a, a very uh, tumultuous uh, 2019 uh, general elections in Nigeria, especially given the fact that the main actor who is the man to beat in this election, Buhari, is saying that is going to ensure free and fair uh, polls. And I want to uphold him by, by his words. I don't think, I don't see that Buhari as somebody who, who is going to say is going, is, 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 is going to be a duet or die affair, especially given the fact that we had 
are the first transition from a major uh, a, a ruling party to a major opposition party under Jonathan, and that was uh, seamless. And I think we should still continue to give kudos to Jonathan for giving us uh, that break in Nigeria. And you know, Yusuf, um, a lot of people will still say, even though if Buhari is saying this verbally, that there are some people that surround him that might not allow this, you know, um, good intention to materialize. That a lot of people will still tell you that they don't believe that the, the, the police and some other security agencies might not be deployed for the 2019 election. As in deployed in the sense that they might not uh, they uh, they might not play a partisan role in 2019 election. Well, I still believe that many people, you know, trust Buhari. Not everybody, but many people still trust Buhari. They still believe him if he says something. But I would like the president to you know, look inwards in the sense that what he says, what he represents, what he wants to happen, you should try and first and foremost, you know, to do that within his supporters, the camp of his supporters. Because when you look at it, I can never believe that a president, Muhammadu Buhari, will want election to rig for anybody, not even himself. I won't believe it if you tell me that. But President Muhammadu Buhari will not be in charge of everything. Those working for President Muhammadu Buhari, he needs, because talk is very cheap. Working the talk is a bit, you know, it's a bit of task. He needs to let this happen. I would like to help the president to take a look back since the day one he took office and now, and look at all the elections that took place under his watch. You see by elections in state, House of Assembly, in House of Reps, in the Senate, even governorship elections. You may say whatever you want to say about any party, anybody, but in this country today, honest historians will give it to the former president, uh, Gulag Jonathan. That's the guy that deepened the democratic process in this country more than anybody. The records are there. He, when he introduced, you know, armed forces, the military into elections, I was one of those who didn't like it. But when we saw the performance of our military and the result on the electoral integrity of Nigeria, I said, okay, let it be. And it, it started working. But I want Momodu Buhari to see that inconclusive elections, why? Vote buying. It's not INECO. I'm coming. President Buhari is not INEC. But, you know INEC is but he appointed, he appointed INEC chairman. The name you is can, Independent you, National you, Electoral Commission. You he might have appointed them to do their work, but it's not the one that is counting the votes than, or adjudicating the votes. Is, less is than, it, last year, <laughs> let's say, um, let me learn. Is it less Buhari year. that is buying the votes? No, I'm coming. <laughs> That's the president of the country. That is, I want his state, I want him to address the, before the election, as much as the, he can, address the issue of, you know, vote buying. I know it's not about APC or PDP, it's about Nigeria. Let me, let me just pause it there. Okay. Adekunle Yusuf, my producer is telling me that we have to take this uh, breather. We go for this commercial break. When we come back, we'll talk more. It's still the first edition of Journalist Hangout, reaching you live from Television Continental. We'll be right back after this time out. Please stay with us. This journalist hangout we are reaching you from the best television station of the year, according to NMMA. <laughs> yes. Television Continental. Yes, it's, it's official. <laughs> well, it's official. <laughs> no, it's official. Okay, let's it's not opinion. The it's not an opinion. <laughs> Before we went on that break, you explained yes, something. Yes, I want Mr. President as much. I know he doesn't have a lot of the time, but there's still a little space he can utilize. The issue of vote buying, if it continues in this dimension, a magnitude, we will not have democracy again. 
because all the result of any election at any level is it will not is I'm vote, coming, I'm is vote buying will, restricted to a particular party is it do you I want to just this, across the board Abi? is the president i'm talking about nigeria and i'm not talking about any political party oh, about the president the should virtually all do the something parties, about vote buying virtually all the big parties do it okay well i'm trying to say if it, it continues this way it's not new to nigeria but the dimension it has assumed now is frightening if it continues now all the results you'll be having in every election will not reflect the wishes of the people. As and the, that is not democracy. As well, James, your perspective on this, if the president, or number one, has INEC been independent so far from what you've seen, as in Professor Mahmoud, the conduct of the election, look at, analyze the results, APC, PDP, since President Mohamed Bori, where he has taken over the survey. Well, Ayo, it is relative. Okay. You know, I, I can say INEC is independent and has done well. But the person in the other side, the losing camp, will say it's a lie. That's why I'm saying it's relative. But to me, I feel INEC has done credit, yeah, creditably well based on what they have on ground. You know, based on the resources that they have on ground. And based on the conduct so far, INEC has been able to do well because there's nowhere so, INEC will just say they want to conduct I'm elections. INEC did well in Ekiti and Oshun, and you can see that no, for I, if you, you know, look at if you look at if you, if you look at the well. past elections, we've covered elections before. Okay. If you look at the past elections that we have covered, it is either they say the ballot boxes did not, the ballot papers and uh, materials did not come. Okay, they are minimizing that. You understand? Are minimizing so if you look at, if you if you mm. now want to take it and tick the boxes based on, oh, did they come early? Did the ballot paper were they enough? Was the security okay? And all that and all that. You are going to give um, Mahmoud pass mark for that. Now, if you now want to now say, oh, did my party win? You won't. Some people will say no. Some people will say yes. So that is where the relativity comes in. You understand? And then, okay, who did they announce as winner? Everybody will start saying, ah, no, they didn't announce somebody. There was a by-election they were supposed to be. Then you now bring out the Constitution and begin, or the Electoral Act and begin to quote all the sections. So people, the, the people will have opposing views if, if in, in the sense that INEC did not do well. But to me, in terms of conducting the election, to the best of their ability, INEC has done well. Okay. MJ, looking at this now, if you are going to say free, fair, and credible election at the end of the day, but the major opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, they've started, you know, they, they've said it over and over again that they don't have confidence in this independent National Electoral Commission as it's so composed. And we have 45 days to that election. <clears throat> it's, it's very relative, like Asuko said, you know. It depends on which side of the divide you are. Um, during the uh, Jaga days, APC2 was uh, quite apprehensive mm -hmm. uh, uh, during the, uh, pre pre the 2015 elections. And they were, they were appreh apprehensive whether INEC, they questioned the, uh, the, the neutrality of uh, INEC then. But today, it's, uh, it's PDP that's crying. Uh, uh, okay, let me take my first call of the year, Jamil. It's so. Uh, ah. Happy New Year, Jamil. Jamil is calling us for Kaduna State. Happy New Year. I think, Jamil, you're, you're listening to your monitor. Okay, MJ. Yeah, so um, like, I, like I said, it, it depends on which uh, side of the divide you are. And uh, if, you look at, uh, if you look at the situation, uh, you see a situation where, especially when it has to do with uh, uh, vote buying or how people emerge at elections. It's, it's like, I recall when I was in secondary school, <clears throat> my school was constantly being trashed by a particular school. In our, uh, you see that the same set of players continue to play for uh, that school for about five, six, seven years. <laughs> we will now wonder, are they not going to graduate or what will happen? But uh, these guys are professional footballers. They will, they, will, they will take any school to the trainers, like 14-0, 15-0, until we also went to start buying 
uh, mercenary. So, so <laughs> it, the thing is, when it comes to elections, we, the president will preach that it should be free and fair. Everybody will say there should be no vote blind. But when you see others, look at look at the PDP primaries. It was a rain of uh, uh, dollars. I covered it. I didn't see dollar. Okay, in, I, in, I in, was in, in Portugal life. I didn't see it. So, uh, like but that. that of APC was a bit. I mean, uh, uh, it was an anointing of uh, uh, President, uh, President. President Buhari. So that one was a bit less. But in so many other states, even in some APC states, you see uh, cash flowing here and there during the primaries and even the main elections. But the thing is, do you now allow your uh, opponent to be uh, buying votes while you sit and watch and 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 assume that? Uh, your, <laughs> your, your, uh, your work will work for you, or that. Mm. So th that is the dilemma that okay. INEC would have to face. And they have so deployed some, uh, uh, developed some means, uh, you even find it difficult to know whether vote buying is going on or not. So does INEC even have the personnel or even the police to monitor a vote buying or to curtail it? And has anybody been punished for vote buying? Mm. or for any electoral malpractice in the past. How do you even prove, you even prove mm. that mm. votes mm. have been bought because or sold? Uh, I think the last election, since INEC said they were going to be prosecuting anybody that they see, you know, uh, very close and everything. Yeah. So the political parties devise another means. Another means. They, they, they were always doing come it. with they go it. Was, uh, yes. <laughs> Before it was see and buy. Yes. <laughs> so in Osho State, it wasn't see and buy. They would have concluded the transaction. <laughs> where <laughs> where you now go there. Part of the party. <laughs> <laughs> to the extent that some parties even got some people to swear. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, it's cross. Uh, you cross, cross uh, <laughs> the ding guns and uh, what have you. <laughs> Okay, I have Aminu from Borno. Thank you for joining us, Aminu. Hello, Aminu. Hello? I'm waiting for my first caller for this year. Yes, yes Aminu. Hello? Yes, Aminu. Hello? Thank you yes, for joining hello. us. I can hear you. Hello? Okay, congratulations. You are my first caller for yes, this can year. You hear me? Yes, go ahead okay. with your contribution, uh, Aminu from Borno. Don't be deceived with this uh, body space and talk. That's the hello. Yes, go ahead. Okay, that's the usual talk to deceive people to get bored. When you enter power, you will not see anything. So that's how he used to carry people. In Medjugorje, he even cried to deceive people. So I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> okay, I mean, let's start projecting now. Because um, if you went through innocent Okoye's class um, in in features, ethics. No, 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 in features. Well, features yeah, <laughs> oh, I got a A. Okay. I got a A. Now. I got a <laughs> and it will tell you the ability of a journalist to project. Will Muhammadu Buhari will he lose the election in the next forty-five days? From the feelers you've gotten, we had discussion last week, and that's the most difficult question for anyone to answer, even the president himself. Because even one day, 24 hours, it's like a century in politics. Anything can happen within that small space. Now we are not talking about a day, we are talking about almost two months. From projections. It's, it's the most difficult for question anybody can answer. If anybody tells you that if certain President Momodu Buhari will win, maybe it's a lover of Buhari, that's what he's saying. <laughs> or if he's a hater of Buhari, he will say we lose. But certainly, nobody can say with precision. But let me tell you, it's far, far easier for the sitting government, you know, to win elections. Because you will have to contest on your record. Mm -hmm. Unless you want to tell me you have no record, which is impossible. So a sitting government, we have records. I believe the president should be able to campaign on his records. It's unfortunate we have the kind of media we have in Nigeria. We don't set agenda. We model up the entire space. Let's be honest. Abroad, you talked about issue-based campaigns. It's the media that, you know, get that to happen in Nigeria. The media are part of the problem, if not even the leading actors in the problems mm -hmm. of Nigeria, in every facet of our problems. Minus in Nigeria. JH. You said what? Minus JH. Ah, where? What are you are doing now? Oh, are you, I <laughs> <need to have> <laughs> <laughs> this, this one is this one just pure 
you know, <laughs> analysis. Yeah. If let's you take it from media, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Don't let us, you mm -hmm. know, trivialize it. Okay. I'm part of the media, and we have to be honest. If we love our country, mm -hmm. the way the media, you know, you know, operates in Nigeria today, I always shake my head if there's any hope. Tijani is calling us from Abuja. That's true. Thank you for joining us, Tijani. I think we're having issues with this line. So. Hello. Hello, Tijani. Hello. Yes, Happy New Year. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Hello. Go ahead, Tijani. I can hear you. Yeah, I'm. A, uh, yes, I'm a Jebu Tijani calling from Abuja. All right. Yes, I want to contribute to uh, your story. Okay. Yeah, the president is saying that the elections are going to be free and fair, and uh, and uh, no blood. It's going to be blood. It's going to be a bloodless and all that. But the truth is, the body language of the ruling party. And the president is suggesting otherwise. Because look at the happening. People are apprehensive. You look at the, the uh, them do what he, they said the offense was committed in some of them. Why was the student in Kano? Look at Dino Milaye because of the rank or whatever at the National Assembly is being terrible. For what was committed around July, there about the house, the, the policemen are there in the house, they sit here. So if these, all these things are not speak well, what the president says, the election will be free and fair and the body language is different. So this is like double speaking. So we are not taking it straight. All right. Thank you, Tijani. Thank you for your frank uh, contribution. As, look, as we reach home stretch on this, let's look at we're together in the newsroom in 2014 when um, the change happened. Mm -hmm. But as at one month, two months to the election, even when the election was postponed by six weeks, yeah. we knew that it was just. Um, um, postponing the evil day, yeah, exactly. where, uh, that that day was going to come, and we, write, we said so. We set the agenda on E15, mm -hmm. and do you see anything changing? Do you see a regime change? Ayo, you want to put me on the spot? <laughs> <laughs> you tried the same thing, but you know what, Ayo? It is just like uh, Mojid said. The the fillers outside is here and there, just like you also said, it's like this and so none of them can lay claim to the to victory. Hmm. Now too close to call. It's just too close. Because yes, the only way you can win is for you to bring visible achievements. People have to feel your achievement. They have to you know, where where once you talk achievement, I want to see the achievement, you know, and not just rhetorics. And then for you to win elections in Nigeria, it is not just con chop, as they will say. You will need so many things. Mm. You will need money. Forget it. You big, will need money. Big money. And it's not just small money, but big <laughs> money. You will know now. I, I, you know. This vote by now, they, they are not giving granots. Mm. They are mm. giving money. Mm. MJ, I want to repeat this before I take my break. Well, it's... um. Too close to call and uh, unlike what we had in 2015. Too close to call. Yeah, too close to call. Uh, but I see the ruling party having a slight edge. But that's as at today. But then we have 45 days to go. And like he said, 24 hours is a very long time in politics. When we return, governors insist they cannot pay 30,000 naira minimum wage as organized labor vows to shut down the economy. Stay with us, still journalists hang out. Welcome back. Another crucial issue that may shape events in the year is in Nigeria is the lingering new minimum wage question. After much negotiations, the impasse is yet to be resolved with state governors who appears to be holding their heads, insisting they are not financially buoyant to pay the proposed 30,000 naira new minimum wage. In a statement in Abuja, from Abuja, the Nigerian Governors Forum says they cannot pay due to financial constraints, but the organized labor are poised for a showdown with the governors on the issue. In a New Year message, to the workers, president of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Ayuba Waba, said they are left with no option than a national strike, which could just be days away. Gentlemen, it's not looking good for this administration particularly. 
if we have the presidential election in 45 days and the somebody uh, yesterday we were talking about ASU, um INEC calling ASU, ASU to still have a meeting with them so that mm -hmm. they can you know reconsider some things and today we are looking at the minimum wage and if NLC is if the Nigerian Labour Congress is saying that they're going to shut down the economy at this crucial time, it might be it's, a minus to this government. It's, it's so it's sad dangerous. that we allow this matter to drag to election time. Because this shouldn't be a very, very complicated matter. But now we have complicated, over complicated it. Can the I, federal government of I Nigeria don't see, afford I'm coming, to pay? I'm coming. I don't see minimum wage issue resolved before the election. Hmm. Go and look at it very well. The economic outlook, even the FJ cannot pay. The federal government cannot afford to pay. Go and check the budget. A lot of things that people don't talk about, they are in the budget. How much provision was made for that in the budget? You may tell me you will do supplementary, but you see intentions of any government through the budget. But the state governors, we always carpet them, we always say they are this, they are that. If there is sincerity, this matter was supposed to have been resolved a long time ago. But across board, I don't think we really want uh, a minimum wage, especially now that election is coming. Are you saying you are going to bamboozle the federal government now to be forced to do something? Or the state governors, many of them that are, are not even returning. Mm -hmm. So it makes it extremely difficult. Uh, okay, how many months now has this matter been on the table of Mr. President? The tripartite, uh, whatever they call themselves, that recommendation. It shouldn't take 24 hours. For the matter to be forwarded, you know, to the people that will make it, you know, pass it into law. Mm. Even the National Assembly, when the pressure was much, even had to issue a statement to say that if it comes to our desk today, we're going to do it within 24 hours. We haven't seen anything. And if nothing comes to their desk, what happens? We are just talking. There is nothing like national minimum wage for now. Majid, why is it difficult? Give us the fact you are a business journalist. Give us the fact behind the figures. No, uh, <coughs> the, 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 the fact of the matter is that, uh, except we want to deceive ourselves, like uh, uh, Adekunle said, they don't, the governors don't have the capacity to pay. Only very few states can actually pay the minimum wage. And that's why the NGF issued a statement uh, yesterday that um, they are not saying they cannot pay the 30,000. Know, now they were using grammar for us. They said, they have a relative threshold, quote and unquote, of 22,500, below which uh, any, as, as a benchmark, no state should pay less than 22,500. But Labour is saying it is 30,000 or nothing. But now, <laughs> 30,000 minimum. Minimum <clears throat> or nothing. Now, Labor, I mean, the, the governors are saying that, fine, we've sat down, we've met with the president. I mean, they took one state each from each of the six geopolitical zones, Lagos, um, uh, they met with the president, and the president even now said, oh, they should bring all the uh, books of the 36 states. And they both sat with the president and looked at it. I think that was December 15. And the president was convinced that there was no way these guys could pay this money. Mm -hmm. But they now, the, the, the governor's forum now put a caveat that any state that could pay above 22,500, even beyond 30,000 can go ahead and pay, but nobody should pay less than. So that is where we are now. But then mm -hmm. we're all aware that the uh, latest deadline expired yesterday. yesterday. And uh, Ayuba Waba said is already mobilizing um, workers all over the Federation. And INEC, in, <laughs> in readiness for that, is thinking of recalling former uh, co uh, members, co -members <clears throat> as, as, as a stopgap in case 
uh, labor goes on strike again. And you recall that beyond labor, ASU is also on uh, strike, and most of the uh, presiding officers, mm. uh, officers. Uh, yeah, the mm. attorney officers, are from the universities and vice uh, chancellors, uh, chancellors and other uh, senior uh, lecturers that handle uh, both uh, at the state level and uh, local government level. They are all from the uh, academia. So it's really a very challenging situation as we, I mean, we have just 45 days to go. Labor is warming up for strike. Governors are saying they can't afford more than 22,500. Labor is saying it's 30K. Mm. Do they have the capacity to pay? I think uh, the answer is no. Asuko. <laughs> it's a tough one. Cross it's a tough one. <laughs> 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 the thing is, labor, labor would not agree that the governors don't have the capacity to Because there's this <laughs> fixation about their lifestyle. <laughs> no, sorry, no, no, sorry. That is Even at 18,000, how many states are paying? Even at 18,000, how many states are paying up the That's what I'm still saying. Yes. That labor, the governors have not shown the capacity that they are broke. <laughs> That is, that is I like thing. that. I like you that. Understand? I like that. You understand? If they, if, you, if they show that, oh, I'm using one car and maybe one outrider and maybe um, just imagine a governor going out, Ayo, for instance. He goes out with six, seven cars and all of them are going to be failed. They are going to be driven. They will have maybe two or three policemen, aids upon aids and all that. These are just political aids. No, I, I you understand? Sorry, no, wait, I, no, I, no, I need to you know, I'm just something. trying to let you know why labor will not agree. The security, SSS, police, uh, special mobile force, they must be in the governor's convoy. Yes, it is a rule no, that we, has to be changed we, from the National Assembly no, before you can... That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So it is not the governor, but... Maybe the very cool, the convoy. They will have like 10, 11, 12... nothing you can do about that. So that is the... The policies of our governors, we have to reduce. Reduce. That is what I'm saying. Enough to pay the salaries of workers? Let me tell you, <laughs> you see, because most of these issues, let's put them in perspectives. We need to know, because we are not the only country in the world. I don't know why a civil servant in Borono State must earn the same thing We've with the another in Lagos. same level in, with Lagos. in Lagos. We said that this separately. madness, we must trash it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we want national minimum wage, if you go to the U.S. and other Federal, places, Federal Canada, it does not mean that everybody must be on the same level. Yeah, exactly. No. That because please, this is the benchmark. That is what it all means. As if, as at the end of these discussions, the federal government and the governors are able to agree that the yeah. list should be 22, anyone that can be, mm -hmm. you can't even pay more than 30. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So, I think, I think that's what makes, that is so, the most sensible this, thing. This first unitary thing that, uh, you, you know, we, has to federal, be like this. we want to make everything is one thing. No, it does not work. It can't work. <laughs> So that's part so of uh, the uh, in, restructuring in, system yeah, that, that, that part of the restructuring that stop it. I've, I've, I've suggested the California example, where they all sat down in Sacramento, the, the, the capital of California, mm. and agreed that rather than uh, uh, agree to a five-year uh, incremental uh, increase, rather, mm. then they should do a, a periodic, but yearly, maybe. Yearly. 3% in the 2018, Every, yes, 5% like in 2019. And it will rise. It's easier to achieve than to wait for so another five years and jump from 18 to 30. Mm -hmm. Until we go back to the uh, 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 drawing board and, and look for a way out of this mess, we'll continue to, they have been on this since uh, almost seven years ago now. Then okay. labor needs to understand that. Yeah. What happens in Lagos must not be the same thing that must happen Apple in Akwa exactly. or, 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 or Yobe. Because cost of living in parts of Nigeria, labor does not have the power to make it uniform. Yeah. So why must you make the you know income uniform? Minimum wage. All right. It can't work. Okay, moving ahead now. As we begin the journey into the 2019 election, that one institution will be in the eye of this political storm. That all eyes will now be on the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC to deliver elections that will be acceptable or seem to be acceptable to all. Leading the call for INEC to be above board is the Christian Association of Nigeria that can, in its New Year message, can cautions INEC against taking side in the elections, urging the electoral umpire 
and its personal, personnel to maintain neutrality in the conduct of the polls. It also wants the federal government not to involve the military in the polls to guide against voter intimidation. It says only a free and fair election can usher in credible leadership. Well, let me quickly take this breather. When we come back, we talk on the, about the Christian Association of Nigeria. Please don't go away. Welcome back. Reaching home stretch on this now. In 2015, as we go, yes, when we had the likes of. Um, um, what is it? Japa? No, no, no. Um, Father Akka. Cardinal Olugumi, Okoji. Anthony Okoji. Olugumi Okoji, yeah. during the military rule. Oh, that was during the yes. yeah. ah, my, yeah. my friend, Monsignor Gabriel Osu, mm -hmm. you know, people that, you know, Those they are, were like the conscience of the people. These are, no, no, as, no. as at that time. Human beings. Look at how the Christian Association of Nigeria was involved in the 2015 um, politics and the role they played. I would say that Khan actually lost his soul mm. when Olubimi Okoji actually left. Mm. Or when, I think it was when the Catholics actually left the, left the association. Mm. Because if you look at it, it was, it was during Olubimi Okoji that Khan was very, very active in social issues mostly, in social issues. And they left politics for those who are, were operating politics. And when politicians were doing bad, they would just say it the way it, it was. Is. And they were not involved in any way. Their members then too, they were not, they, they, they not just saying anything anyhow. Because they knew that it is the only thing they have to do was to save their members and let their members respect and you know, regard what that association was all about. But this, from 2015, we started hearing Khan and their leadership flying and ferrying money up and down, <laughs> sitting with, you know, politicians, dining and even making inflammatory comments up till from that period 2015 down now, that even now is even worse. People, you know, stay on the pulpit. Mm. Men of God in small g. Mm. Because that is what I call them. Men of God. In small g. <laughs> Some people call them you know? of men. <laughs> and then be bringing and bringing out curses on people. Ordinary G. You that cannot create anything. You know, raining abuses and curses on human beings that God Almighty, the big G, has created. And, in, and, and you don't know the impact. Most of them don't know the impact of the, of the words they bring out from the pulpit. Ayo, we go to church. You know how heavy our pastors and our reverend, the words that they bring out. And you know how people will shout. Religion really the of the masses. <laughs> you understand? Anywhere a man of God it's says. very, very. You know, when, when a man of God says some things, you take it home. Because you believe it's coming the from the, it's, it's like the inspiration of God. That's the intermediary. You between understand? You and, and so by the time a man of God stays on the pulpit and begins to bring out words and begin to swear and curse, and he doesn't even care whether he's going to scatter the nation or scatter Nigeria, it then it becomes a problem. So can, yes, they have said some things. Yes, we don't want vote buying. I respect them for that. Nobody wants to hear anything about vote buying. But please, in the name of God, this presence can. They must reign on their members. I don't know whether they still have the PFN separate and can't separate. Because I know back then, during uh, Lubumi Okoje's time, well, they were all, hardly, can, can hardly like will you hear PFN. Body. Yes, hardly will you like hear PFN separate. Mm. You know, it was after a while that we started hearing PFN and then mm. can. But right now, there are two bo different bodies. If you say, ah, it's can, they say, no, we are PFN. You understand? So, right, Khan should make sure that their members, I, I keep saying it, leave politics for politics, eh, for politicians. Actually, now, we are not saying that the pastor should not involve in politics. Our vice president is, is already a politician. But we all see and regard and see the way he speaks. He doesn't just say things in anyhow. 
even though it mounts a pulpit in, in, right, right here in Lagos, but it doesn't just go out and begin to curse and abuse. He has that respect. And we, so many people keep respecting the vice president, and he's a pastor. So why can't our own men of God, in small g, respect and even take a cue from the vice president? Majid, even uh, the, the other side, uh, Murik, they were asking why did the federal government declare public holiday today and everything, and, and I was like, another are, problem. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> January 1? <laughs> so the thing is, um, like Azuko said, the, the, the religious institution in Nigeria have since lost their credibility and their respect. Uh, when you see um, Nigeria is, um, a, a state, is not a Muslim state. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a Muslim. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is not an Islamic state. We run from January to December. We don't run with the Ijra calendar. So why would you say you want to take uh, and the federal government to talk, I read to court. For, for what? To so declaring January first. For declaring January first public holiday. I mean, if you feel so aggrieved, then you go to work mm -hmm. on January first. Open your shop. Open now. your shop and people will come <laughs> and buy. Then going to the other side, the when leaders of uh, uh, the, 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 the religious leaders start describing themselves as being uh, dangerously wealthy. Mm. then you see they have thrown all caution to the dogs. And when somebody who is supposed to be, I mean, uh, a, a, a pro-chancellor of two universities does not understand the difference between a satire and a factual write-up. No, 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 Religion is a very sensitive No, no, in Nigeria it is. Very sensitive, but then highly people should know their limits. You, 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 believe me, I have a lot of reservations, you know, for Khan and all that. But on this, on this point, the coming election, I totally agree with, you know, what the Khan is, you know, the leadership of Khan is preaching. You know, how do we do something about vote buying? Mm -hmm. How do we ensure that in this election, the level, the playing field is actually mm -hmm. level? Mm -hmm. That there is absolute neutrality when we talk about INEC, when we talk about security, you know, forces, you know, that will be deployed into this election. These are things that we know, we used, we used to know Khan for during the years of Olubumi Okugi, during uh, Sunday Mbang. 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 Yeah. Those, were, <coughs> those were Nigerian. Okay, I have, I have a call from the United Kingdom. Um, Ola Lekon is calling from London. Hello, Lekon. Thank you for joining us. Happy New Year. Hello. Yes, thank you for joining us. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Where are you calling from? Central? And congratulations to TVC for the award. Thank, Thank you. So you for Thank long you. time. Yes. So my contribution is very easy. You see, a very thinkable Nigerian. A very thinkable Nigerian We know who to vote for mm -hmm. in this 2019 election. Because we know what we passed through for the last 15 years of PDP. And the way this government is fighting corruption, I'm not campaigning for them, but that is my own personal view. And it's, it's very, this is a common sense thing we should think, because corruption damages a lot to our country. And it's still affecting us. Even we people in diaspora, it's affecting us. You know, it doesn't portray us good to the international community. So as far as I'm concerned, this government, they are doing their own best. But a thinkable Nigeria will know who to vote for. And God bless the Republic of Nigeria. Thank, Thank you. you Thank, Thank you, Thank you. So wish you the best of luck in 2019. That's So, OK. The point I was trying to, to make, I said, the current leadership of Khan, 
Because that is what I call them. Men of God. In small g. <laughs> Some people call them you God know? of men. <laughs> and then be bringing and bringing out curses on people. Ordinary g. You that cannot create anything. You know, raining abuses and curses on human beings that God Almighty, the big G, has created. And, in, and, and you don't know the impact. Most of them don't know the impact of the, of the words they bring out from the pulpit. I we go to church. You know how heavy our pastors and our reverend, the words that they bring out. And you know how people will shout. Religion anywhere. Baby, of the masses. <laughs> you understand? Anywhere a man of it's God says very, very you know when when a man of God says some things, you take it home because mm. you believe it's that's coming from the it's, it's like the inspiration of God. That's the intermediary. You between understand? And, and so by the time a man of God stays on the pulpit and begin to bring out words and begin to swear and curse. And he doesn't even care whether he's going to scatter the nation or scatter Nigeria. And then it becomes a problem. So, can yes, they have said some things. Yes, we don't want vote buying. I respect them for that. Nobody wants to hear anything about vote buying. But please, in the name of God, this president can. They must rain on their members. I don't know whether they still have the PFN separate and can separate. Because I know back then, during uh, Lubumi Okoje's time, well, they were all, hardly, can, can hardly will like you hear PFN. Body. Yes, hardly will you hear like PFN separate. Mm. You know, it was after a while that we started hearing PFN and then CAN. Mm -hmm. But right now, there are two bo different bodies. If you say, ah, it's CAN, they say, no, we are PFN. Mm. You understand? So, right, CAN should make sure that their members, I, I keep saying it, leave politics for politics, eh, for politicians. Actually, now, we are not saying that the pastor should not involve in politics. Our vice president is, is already a politician. But we all see and regard and see the way he speaks. He doesn't just say things in anyhow, even though he mounts a pulpit in, in, right here in Lagos. But he doesn't just go out and begin to curse and abuse. He has that respect. And we, so many people keep respecting the vice president, and he's a pastor. So why can't our own men of God, in small g, respect and even take a cue from the vice president? Majid, even uh, the, the other side, uh, Murik, they were asking why did the federal government declare public holiday today and everything, and, and I was like, another are, problem. are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> January 1? <laughs> so the thing is, um, like Azuko said, the the, the religious institution in Nigeria have since lost their credibility and their respect. Uh, when you see um, Nigeria is um, a, a state, it's not a Muslim state. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a Muslim. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is not an Islamic state. We run from January to December. We don't run with the Ijra calendar. So why would you say you want to take uh, and the federal government will talk uh, to court for, for what? To so declaring general first. For declaring that the first public holiday. I mean, but if you feel so aggrieved, then you go to work mm -hmm. on January 1st. Open your shop. Open now. your shop and people will come and buy. <laughs> then going to the other side, the, when leaders of uh, uh, the, 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 the religious leaders start describing themselves as being uh, dangerously wealthy, mm. Then you see they have thrown all caution to the dogs, and when somebody who is supposed to be, I mean, uh, a, a, a pro chancellor of two universities, does not understand the difference between a satire and a factual write-up. No, 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 I will no. allow you to do that. No. I will protect my program. Yes. I will allow you to do yeah. that. You I've said, not, you I've, said it. I've you not, said I've it. You, you I've professed your faith. You have said it. I've not it's mentioned names. thing. If it was Asuka saying this, I'll tell him that he has the locust. Yes. But he don't have the locust to say that. <laughs> okay. So, Mujid, let's. Religion is a very sensitive. No, no, in Nigeria it is. Very sensitive, but then highly people mm, should know their limits. Mm, mm, mm. You, you, you. Uh, believe me, if I have a lot of reservations, you know, for Khan and all that. But on this, on this point, the coming election, I totally agree with, you know, what the Khan is, you know, the leadership of Khan is preaching. You know, how do we do something about vote buying? Mm -hmm. How do we ensure that 
in this election, the level, the playing field is actually mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. That there is absolute neutrality when we talk about INEC, when we talk about security you know, forces you know, that will be deployed into this election. These are things that we know, we used, we used to know can for during the years of Olubumi Okugi, during uh, Sunday Mba. Mbang. 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 Yeah. Mbang. Those were <coughs> those were Nigerian. Okay, I have, I have a call from the United Kingdom. Um, Ola Lekon is calling from London. Hello, Lekon. Thank you for joining us. Happy New Year. Hello. Yes, thank you for joining us. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Where are you calling from? Central? Um, congratulations to TVC for the award. Thank you. So much. Thank you for a long time. Yes. So my contribution is very easy. You see, a very thinkable Nigerian. A very thinkable Nigerian will know who to vote for mm -hmm. in this 2019 election. Because we know what we passed through for the last 15 years of PDP. And the way this government is fighting corruption, I'm not campaigning for them, but that is my own personal view. And it is very, this is a common sense thing we should think, because corruption damages a lot to our country. And it's still affecting us. Even we people in diaspora, it's affecting us. You know, it doesn't portray us good to the international community. So as far as I'm concerned, this government, they are doing their own best. But a thinkable Nigerian will know who to vote for. And God bless the Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you, you Lekon. Thank, Thank you. you so wish you the best of luck in 2019. That's more right. So, okay. The point I was right trying to, to make, I said, the current leadership of Khan. I welcome this kind of issues from them. Okay. Not Christian, Muslim, you know, things that we inflame, you know, okay. things that can help our country. That is what we know Olubumi Okugi for. You will never, when Olubumi Okugi was, you know, leading Khan, nobody saw Khan as a Christian body. Mm -hmm. He was the conscience of Nigeria. Yeah, exactly. He was fearless. He was Nigerian totally. Mm -hmm. Not a. Uh, we know the problems you know inherited by the current leadership of Khan. I mean, credibility crisis because of what happened in the last election. Mm -hmm. uh, believe me, the the last leadership of that body technically killed that organization. Mm -hmm. But thank God that the new body, the new leadership is rising now. They should take Khan to the era of Sunday and back, the era of Koji. Oh, these were. These were nationalists that for life Nigerians mm. were talking about them. Mm. We want a clean election, we want free and fair election, we want credible election, we want a Nigeria that all of us will be proud of. I think anybody that wants that is a friend of Nigeria. So, as you James. No, no, just like you have said, this can has said some things, and which is INEC has to be neutral. They have to be neutral, they, they, they must not be partisan, they must not take sides. Because that's just like Mr. President, with the first topic that we have, that the president is now saying is not a do or die. Mm. Khan is now saying, I neck, make sure you exercise your neutrality. Mm. And that is what we want Khan to always say, and not just be involving themselves in some other things. Mojit? Yeah, our religious leaders uh, mm. should take these patients to their uh, churches and mosques and uh, tell voters to vote for the right candidate and when they offer their money, they should not take it. Do we still have a um, um, window to collect a PVCs? As in, in the next 45 days, is this still an ongoing thing? No, it's to collect, you can. You can. You can, you can, can collect. collect. So you can, uh, you can register. You can but collect you can any register. moment, you even a yeah. day before mm. election. Yeah, the only thing is, you can new, register. Like okay. New so ones can yeah. These Nigerians still go out. We're counting down. It's in 45 days' time, we choose a president of our choice. And that's it on Journalist Hangout. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. That's the second episode for the year. You can also watch Journalist Hangout on our platform showing on the screen. You can also.
it on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. Feedback channel is Journalist Hangout at TVC News. Dot TV. I'm Ayo Daily Uzubak. I want to thank Asuko James. I want to thank Moji Jamu. And I want to thank <laughs> Adekule Yusuf Kuleshi. <laughs> See you tomorrow. God bless Nigeria. <laughs>